Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will make use of discriminator and GAN losses generated over 100 iterations to make uh, plots. And then we will pick up first fake image from each iteration and plot them to see the changes over 100 iterations. And finally, we will make discriminator and generator networks slightly deeper and see whether it leads to any improvement or not. To plot loss values for 100 iterations, we will use x values from 1 to 100. And then let's plot d loss values first. So I'm going to use a y limit of 0 to 3. x axis labels are going to be iterations. And for y axis labels, we'll just say loss because we will be plotting two different types of losses d loss and g loss. Next, we'll also plot uh, g loss values. So let's use black color for this. Let's also add legend somewhere at the top right. So the first one we can call discriminator loss and second one GAN loss. We can also define colors for both. So first one was red and second one was black. So LTY is the line type and width for the lines appearing in the legend. So let's say 1 to 2 and let's say size is equal to 1. We can correct the spellings. It should be discriminator loss. So we can see that loss values for both discriminator and GAN show a lot of variability in the beginning. In fact, uh, GAN losses are much higher compared to discriminator loss. So note that discriminator and generator networks are competing against each other. So when one network performs better, it is at the cost of the other. When loss for one is low, the loss for the other one is slightly higher. In fact, if we do a correlation plot of both losses, we are expected to get somewhat negatively correlated plot. We also see that discriminator losses uh, gradually increase, which means that it becomes more and more difficult for the discriminator to differentiate between fake and real images. So in the long run, both of these loss values come closer and closer. Let's uh, set our working directory as. So we'll use all the images uh, generated and stored in this directory. Let's also use temp. So this is list dot files. So we can specify a pattern here. All our images are dot PNG. So I'm going to use star dot PNG. So anything that ends with dot PNG. So in fact, if you look at this temp, these are the name of the files. So basically it has uh, file numbers starting with F1 to F100. So let's say my pick is a list. And then we can use a for loop. So from 1 to length of temp. So we are going to read images using read image function using the file name that we have read par mf row so because there are 100 images i'm going to say 10 rows and 10 columns we can use for loop for that so i in 1 2 length of this temp and then we can say plot and this is what we get so what we wanted was the first image from each of the 100 iterations to line up one by one but looks like some of the random images have gone somewhere in between. The reason is that this name temp actually doesn't go in a sequence. So you see like F1 and then F1000. So we'll go in this directory. And instead of calling it 1, let's call it 01, 02, 03. 
zero nine and then also this hundred is going to mess up things so just to make this uh, as the last one i'm going to call it nine 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 something like that so now if i run this temp line and if you look at temp again you see that the pattern is now in a sequence one two three four five and so on up to the last one let's plot this again so this is what actually we wanted in fact this is the first picture out of 50 in the first iteration and this is the first picture out of 50 in the second iteration and so on initially because uh, these fake images are generated from random noise so they look like a noise it takes some time to really see digits 5 more clearly so you can see by the time this uh, network goes through iterations uh, like 91 up to 100 so digit 5 becomes visually more clear to improve the network let's uh, make it slightly deeper so I'm going to add one more convolutional layer just before the final convolutional layer and this time for filters I'm going to use 64 kernel size let's use 5 padding is same and then we use the pipe again add this layer immediately after this so let's uh, rerun so if you look at the summary now so we have a total of 276,801 parameters now similarly in the discriminator network I'm going to add convolutional layer immediately before the flattening layer So filters I'm going to use 64 kernel size so let's keep 4 as it is strides I'm going to use 2 then the pipe symbol and we are going to copy and paste this layer okay so let's uh, run this so if you look at the summary again we see that the total number of parameters obviously increase next we compile the discriminator network and then go through all the remaining codes we'll continue to use batch size of 50 and this is our working directory and let's call this gan underscore img1 and then we run all the codes okay so it has uh, completed the run so now we can plot losses so we see smaller fluctuations this time now let's look at the images from GAN underscore IMG one directory. But before we plot this, let's go back to the desktop. And change these names to 01, 02, 03, 04. And for 100, let's use 99 and 9. So now we can go back and plot these lines. So this is what we get this time. So one thing we notice very clearly is that with the deeper network, these images of 5 start forming actually much earlier compared to the last time. So this clearly suggests that there is an improvement that we are able to get by having a deeper network. To summarize, in this session, we started by providing a broad overview of GANs. We then uh, developed architectures for generator and uh, discriminator network. And then we trained the network over 100 iterations. And uh, finally, we reviewed the results by looking at losses and also looking at 100 fake images spread over 100 iterations and lastly we made the uh, generator and uh, discriminator networks slightly deeper by adding uh, convolutional layers and that helped us to obtain some improvement